My name is Garrett Light, and I am the founder and creative director of Garrett Light California Optical. Welcome to another episode of Spectacle Stories. Today, I'm sitting down with my friend, Michael Brunswick. Michael is an accomplished Venice-based artist as well as an avid eyewear collector. I'm super excited to sit down with him and take a look at his unique and extensive eyewear collection. Let's head inside my office and check it out. Michael, thanks for coming and joining me today. Of course, it's a pleasure. Happy, happy to have you and come and talk about glasses. My first question for you is, do you remember the moment when you first fell in love with glasses? Definitely, as a child, I used to hang out at the store and I would just sit there and stare into the case and try to convince my parents to buy me the glasses. And of course, they really wouldn't buy them for me until I got to a certain age. I finally got a pair of glasses right. from them. And what were those pair? They were Ray-Ban. Okay. I actually have them here today if you want to see them. Yeah, let me They're see. Actually, yeah. You have the first pair of glasses that you ever bought? Yeah. They were in the, the Netflix series Daredevil, believe it or not. What era would this have been? Mid-90s, 94, 93. It's got like a Matrix feel to it's it. It's really weird, right? With the sideways temples and everything. So do you remember, you know, what it was or what fascinated you so much about glasses? That uh... You know, don't laugh at me when I say it. I always felt like putting on glasses made me like a superhero. Like the opposite of totally. Superman. Yeah. The opposite of Superman? Yeah, because he puts on his glasses to be... Incognito, like... Like a, I don't know, a human, regular human. Oh, God. He takes his glasses oh, right. off on okay. Superman and like vice versa. I always right. felt like when I put the glasses on, it was like a, it's like a character. You become a character. Got it. And you can change who your character is. Do you have something in your collection that you brought today that you would consider one of your most prized for sure. Your collection. I'll show you one. Yep. And I mean, that is so a, your most prized possession is an, all, an old Oliver Peoples fan. Yes. Kind of obscure one, too, that looks a little different. Yes, and it was customized. Uh, you know, I reshaped it. Yep. It was a lot more curved and kind of looked like for a librarian before. And oh, now I, I feel really like. I love this frame, man. I feel like you look really, really. This is a cool, cool frame. Cool in that frame. Yeah. I think an interesting thing about you that is, because you don't, you're not a collector in the sense that you want to resell. These are yours, so you customize them, which from a value perspective, maybe it changes the value, but you don't really care. And, and this is really cool because this is not the same shape as what they designed because you had to change it to right. get this lens in. So can you tell me a little bit about sort of your thought process? I had read somewhere, believe it or not, that your dad and uncle yeah. had reshaped a frame for Neil Diamond. Uh, called the Jack, Jack called the Jack yeah. one, Jack way one, yeah. back. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, well, you can reshape a frame. Because you didn't know. Do you have any eyewear heroes, like designers that you really are, you know, from history that you really... Well, Jean-Paul Gaultier was one of my early design, fashion design and eyewear heroes. Yeah. And I brought a couple frames of his if you'd like to see. I really want to see some, yeah, Gaultier. All right, yeah. but I brought some of the coolest ones. So the first one I want to show you is known uh, yes. Nowadays, it's kind of been popularized in the music world by Lady Gaga, but it goes back to the 90s and it's like one of the most sought after frames. God, yeah, it's just such an interesting frame. I love the Gautier filigree on the top. But yeah, Lady Gaga like made this popular by wearing it for like a runway show. Uh, not a runway show, but like the performance. And right. then, uh, I was just talking with somebody about this and it's kind of interesting that these things from a finance perspective go in crazy waves based on popular culture. Right. If you try to buy one of those on eBay, you're gonna pay like 1200 bucks. 1500 right. bucks. Wow. You hope you find somebody who doesn't know what they have or somebody who's put prescription lenses into it. Right. Yeah, you're, you've are you become an expert at finding these things on eBay. Yeah. yeah. We're talking John Paul Gaultier. Yes. That's a little dusty, but... Oh. I mean, it's fashion eyewear. This is like the dawn of fashion eyewear. Totally. This era, and he was maybe the king of it. Tell me about Matsuda. Let's talk a little bit about Matsuda. So I brought some Matsuda frames to show you, but yeah. the thing that really got me into it in the, in the beginning was just the detail and yeah. the craftsmanship. Right. And so I'll show you one of my earliest Matsudas, and then I'll show you one of my most valuable Matsudas. Yeah, let's do that. Early Matsuda, valuable Matsuda. I have a feeling I know which one the valuable one's going to be. So this is my one of my rarest, most early wow. frames that I owned. And I always like that frame. And there's something about the, it's, it's a little bit weird looking, but at the same time, it's very nice. And I won't, you know, if I, I should wear it more often because I get a lot of compliments when I do. Perfectly Matsuda. It's totally timeless and classic. It's got intricate detail. 
I mean, it's it feels it's well made. You know, we reference Matsuda a lot in our designs, especially, I mean, we still do, but like they always had the most amazing custom filigree, uh -huh. hand etched custom filigree throughout the frame. We did that on our Wilson frame, right, totally. Ashland. We've had various frames where we think pulled a lot of inspiration from Matsuda. Let me see your uh, most valuable Matsuda frame in terms of price. Okay, here. So the frame is uh, the Matsuda 2809 and yeah. the Nicole 2801. Right. It was used in Terminator 2. We'll put the clips yeah, on. You could wear it with a tuxedo or you could wear it on a motorcycle. Right. So Sarah Connor wears this frame in the desert. Yeah, this I, really popularized Matsuda. Same time? Same time. <laughs> now those look pretty good on you, actually. Yeah. Matsuda is a designer from the 70s, Japanese designer. Did I, I mean, I think I know this story correctly. And before it was sure. Matsuda, it was called Nicole. Correct. Right? Interesting, because you know, the first time I ever met your dad, I was wearing a Matsuda frame. And I was leaving one of your parties. And he said, can I see that frame? And I said, sure. And he said, that's Matsuda. Yeah. Tell Garrett to make frames like this. He was joking <laughs> around. What, what's like your eyewear motto? Maybe for someone who doesn't, you know, feel comfortable buying glasses, or like, what's a good motto to live by when collecting or buying a pair of glasses for yourself? I would say don't ask anyone else what their opinion is. Go with what you like, and if it puts a smile on your face, you should listen to yourself. Right. Biggest mistake people make, by far, is asking their friend or their relative totally. what they think when they already know they like it. How many pairs of glasses do you have? Like like collectible, high quality. Just the whole at least arsenal. Five hundred pairs. Five hundred pairs. Here's a couple pairs of some of my favorite eyeglasses. Mm -hmm. They're both also Oliver Peoples, but they're yeah. rare. Like that's an OP27 OP in in SLG. And this is an O'Malley 41 though. In black. That's one of the most because of the that, color. This frame yeah. is impossible. I've had people offer me fifteen hundred dollars yeah. for it. If you were to die and come back as a pair of glasses, which frame would you come back as? If I'm coming back as another frame, and I'm coming back as a Porsche Design Aviator. Yeah. And I'll just pull out a couple because I, I don't want to I thought you were the biggest collector of these in the world. I am. That's a black and gold. Lens, That's a black, black and gold. Amazing. Yeah, let's see this. It's like one of the coolest. All right, now I'll show you some GLCO stuff. Yeah. Garrett Light, California Optical. Show me some Garrett Light frames All right, here's Tell one. me why you brought them. Here's one, because okay. I just think it's a sick frame. It's a okay. clune. Yep. Clune 41 again. With flat glass. Yep. Mirror Customized lenses. Michael Brunswick. And also this... Uh, the temple tip is amazing. Yeah. You guys should get back into doing that. Maybe. Yeah, we should. That's actually a good idea. Those look good on you. They're very close to the O'Malley, that frame. This is a Harrison. Yep. Which was, came out with the Wilson. One of the biggest misconceptions people make about eyewear is that they think they can't change the lens. Well, on any gear light shop, you can you go can right do. to the lab. Well, that's a, <laughs> amazing. <up>. That's amazing <laughs> that you can do that in your store. That's but the only that place works. I've ever. Yeah. That's the only place that does that. Yeah. Your store. Other places do it, but they hide it. We we kind of took like an open kitchen oh, vibe about oh, it. Like so you have it. the big glass windows, and we talked about it on social media. We're trying to popularize it more, which is obviously this is a great opportunity to talk about that. But yeah, stores do that. I just think it's a beautiful process with the lens dipping and the frame. If you want to dip frames and cut lenses, so we just tried to bring it to the forefront and show ah, it a little more. I like. It. Do you uh, want to see my most prized Garrett Light frame? Yes. Show me your most prized. Then I'll ask you some questions. Questions. See if you can figure out what that is. It's a Terry Lazary. It's the tooling sample. It's a tooling sample of a Pacific. It's the tooling sample of the Terry Lazary. Terry Lazary. Because you just happen to have an unstamped tooling sample. It's the coolest. Of black, which is a uh, color you finally. Ever made. You're right. You're okay, right. I get it. I get it. All right. Thank, thank you for coming Euro. in today. But I wanted to give you our 10 year anniversary. Oh, thank you. Um, collector's case. I love it. So there you go. I love it. Thank you. It holds four cases, four frames, take it wherever you like. But seriously, thank you for coming in today and sharing your collection. And um, if you enjoyed that, stay tuned for more.